So a zero infinity state means zero means there's nothing. But everything before duality, the zero must be equal to infinity because mm -hmm. there's no duality. Everything is equal to its opposite. So zero and infinity is the state of everything and nothing. Yes. But you should not think of everything here as if everything that happens in the world is already in that state. No, it's not. What you have in that state is beyond time and space. What's happening here is configured in different time-space configurations. What you have up there is very, very difficult to understand because it's timeless, spaceless information. It's the essence of information. Right. It's not information itself, but it's the heart of information, the timeless, spaceless heart of information that can everything can bud out of it. But at the same time, this information is in a state of complete nothingness. Let me uh, take you back to what you just said about the listening to a musical symphony. Okay, now we know that music pulls you into the right brain, pulls you into this emotional aspect, but there's a level where you go in there, where you experience it, but you don't have the proper... Uh, understanding or the proper resonance with it now to understand music music is based you know when you get a string and move the the string it goes into all the musical proportions yes that pythagoras said those are the musical proportions of creation so he said the musical of the spheres all the planets should move according to those proportions and all that so from that we created musical scales, we created music. But in understanding uh, the proportions of creation, we must look at it not in a quantitative way. We must look at it with a qualitative aspect. Now, with the right way of understanding life force, you should look at, imagine, you're hearing a piece of music. Now, imagine that every note in there is a manifestation of life force. So, every note is self-aware of its own position in the whole symphony and its relationship with the other notes. They are self-aware. Now, you tell me, within a piece of music, you want to tell me that a note is as aware as I am listening to the music, you mean the note has an awareness of all. Unless you understand that, you will never really understand the way of the, the holistic way of the ancients that create great civilization. If you don't understand that the note is alive, that when you hear music, the note is observing you mm. because you hear the note. The quality of the note gets into your system, but resonance is two-way. Now, you are part of, become part of the note, so that by listening it, the note has changed because now Paul Cech is inside that note too. Yes. So, and then... If the composer is Mozart or Beethoven, then imagine that Polchek is interacting with the soul of the note and through the soul of the note with the whole symphony and the life force of the symphony is connected to the life force of Beethoven or Mozart beyond time and space. So once you understand how 
we are a multidimensional thing. You will also understand that you are also connected to other dimensions. Now, how can you be connected to other dimensions? Look at when we spoke about emotions and uh, mental levels beyond the physical. Mm -hmm. We have physical particles here because they interact. Physical particles are the benevolence of the universal mind to create particles in within the perception of the physical dimension, within the time-space uh, dimension. Now, in a higher emotional mental dimension, life force will create emotional mental particles. I mean, that's the least, it can, it's, it's not beyond these possibilities. No. So you will have many, many dimensions that once you live here, you will find them just as material as the physical dimension here. Oh, yes. I, I brought this up, actually, uh, in a podcast with a lady named Ishtar, who's a famous spiritual teacher and channeler, and she was talking about things like astral travel and remote viewing and how she mentioned, you know, that you can't really use your senses there. But I said, look, I can travel to the to any place in the universe as a remote viewer, and I can, I've been on other planets uh, and, and breathed air and drank water and, and had conversations and hugged people. So I, I was explaining to her that that, that, that is a conception that I think um, comes from people that don't have experience of being in these other dimensions. Uh, I, I personally feel that the physical senses are really the gross expressions of extrasensory perception that is more in line with the soul's natural state. Because I could literally remote view and come stand right behind you and touch your head and you'd probably feel it. Yeah, I'm but just... you know, physical senses are made for you to experience the physical world. Right. Now, if you are living in an out-of-body experience, you don't have the physical senses anymore. So you don't experience the solidity or materiality of the physical dimension, but you can experience the material dimension of the state, the emotional mental state you're in. Yes. Now, now you have another level of emotional mental senses. And to those senses, the, the outside world there that's projected from you on that level is as material as this one. And when you are there, this level is not as material as the one you're in on the other side. Right. So we should see the multiverse or the universes as full, full of civilizations and life and beings that are not necessary of electromagnetic, physical, materialized uh, bodies. They could be emotional, mental particles manifesting. And by the way, the, the distance from the speed of light up all the way to the zero infinity state of divinity is trillion times more than, this, than the dimension within the speed of light that we live in. Right. So there are so many dimensions there. Mm -hmm. And... Our emotional, mental uh, interactions actually resonate with all those dimensions. So not our physical, but the resultant emotional, mental activity behind it is the language of those other dimensions. So, so the, the I was just going to say. Uh, one way to conceptualize this that's often used by scientists that are highly conscious, like David Bohm or William Tiller and, and, and Fred Allen Wolf and people like that, is that the material three-dimensional realm we're in is really a condensation of consciousness. Consciousness here not being conscious of, like you're conscious of me talking, but consciousness as zero, 
that which is aware yes. of all. So would it be safe to say in your conception that we're in a vibrational resonance that is a condensation of the dimensions you're speaking yes. about right now? You see, Paul, I want uh, to, to look, to go with you a bit uh, more into those higher dimensions. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, okay. And, and one of the questions I had, by the way, that fits into this, because I think it's important since we're going to talk about dimensions, is to define what a dimension is, because listeners often don't really have a concept for what a dimension is. Maybe you can preface it by helping everybody differentiate. What's the difference between dimensions? How do you well, define a dimension? What is or isn't part of this dimension, for example? Well, the, the simplest way that we perceive is not, I won't go into the scientific explanation, but I'll go in a very simple way first. The dimension is an experience. An experience creates a dimension. Okay. So, when we go beyond the physical dimension, imagine, for example, that here time moves in a linear way. It's like beads attached to a string. Mm -hmm. So it moves in a linear way. Now, if the beads are in different colors, you could detect a pattern in the colors, like you detect the feeling of the seasons and all that. So you could have some emotional interaction within the quantitative one. But now, when the linearity of time is not there, that means the string holding the beads is not there anymore. Or when you, could you say it's tied in a circle instead of being No, alone? no, no. It tied no. in a circle means there is a, a, a still a flow. No, okay. The beads are out. So that's what we call stacked time. Yes. Stacked time is when you have all the pictures of your life given to you in a big stack like this in any order. So that would be a vertical dimension. It's no dimension. It's a stacked time. There's no dimension yet in there. It's just. Yeah, I'm just talking about the. Horizontal. No, because, because you can stack them this way, this way, throw them around. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, imagine them at totally haphazard. Okay. So now each page in this stack uh, has a picture in it. Mm -hmm. Now each picture has, of course, must have a very uh, simple, limited time space configuration for you to see the picture. But it's not, it doesn't go beyond the beads itself or beyond the page itself. It's mm -hmm. just to, uh, to, to put the information together in there. Now, when this, the pages, let's say you are in this page and you enter into resonance with two or three other pages, you form a situation. In the book, I call that an experience. An experience is when uh, multiple pages connect. You connect with a parent, with a friend, and, and then it connects with another page. By resonance, three, four pages are pulled together until you get maybe six, seven pages that form an experience. So an experience is a dimension in which you move because it experience has its own time space. And having its own time space means it's a dimension. Right. Okay. I, that, that helps. Yes. Now look at it this way. Everything in the universe is the result. You know, l l let's go to the beginning when I speak about creation. Uh, you have a zero infinity state. Yes. Now, before anything, because there's nothing manifested, no duality. So a zero infinity state means, zero means there's nothing. But everything before duality, the zero must be equal to infinity because mm -hmm. there's no duality. Everything is equal to its opposite. So zero and infinity is the state of everything and nothing. 
Yes. But you should not think of everything here as if everything that happens in the world is already in that state. No, it's not. What you have in that state is beyond time and space. What's happening here is configured in different time-space configurations. What you have up there is very, very difficult to understand because it's timeless, spaceless information. It's the essence of information. Right. It's not information itself, but it's the heart of information, the timeless, spaceless heart of information that can everything can bud out of it, but at the same time, this information is in a state of complete nothingness. Now, mm -hmm. from this, this is the level of divinity yes. that we cannot comprehend at all. You can't because you have to, you, you, there's nothing to cut up. Th there's nothing to cut up because if you say exists, the word exists and non-existence is, are the same word there. Yes. Up and down means the same thing there. Right and yeah. left. It, so you cannot comprehend divinity. Yeah. Now, there's a first level that arises out of this. It's a sort of a first, it's not yet duality, but it's the preparation for duality. So it's the level, the first level where the laws that are going to produce duality start appearing. So this is the, the place what we call the primordial fog, the primordial mm -hmm. state, just before duality. There you have, for example, things like the law of time. Here you have manifestation of consciousness starting. It will go into duality. So you have all those laws there. They are not yet, it's not yet consciousness. It's the principle of consciousness. It's not yet time. It's the law of time. Mm -hmm. From this level, then uh, a spark. This is the sort of, this is the level directly connected to the zero infinity. So from this level, you have a sort of duality emerges. But when duality emerges, it emerges as a pulse. But the meaning of pulse means there's a law governing it. It starts and comes back. So pulse means the law of time plus consciousness. Together, they produce the first pulse. Now, the first pulse is governed by the zero infinity state, which is always at the center of everything. Because by definition, if it's zero infinity state, that means it exists everywhere.